I love that so much. If, if we ever do another video on the show, if you guys want to see it, I want to find whatever episode that guy destroying that dummy with a knife is. We will watch that next. Well, you guys did in fact want another video like a lot of you. So today we're going to be taking another look at Deadliest Warrior. Airing on Spike TV, the vault soda of cable television, Deadliest Warrior would pin two fighters from history, ancient or modern, up against each other to see who is the Deadliest Warrior. Just like the name of the show. Hosted by Great Value Dane Cook, otherwise known as Jeff, the biomedical engineer. Yeah, okay, sounds made up to me. The computer nerd, Max, who inputs all of the raw data into the state-of-the-art computer simulation software to determine the final results. And then, the doctor. <sighs> The doctor. I don't care how much I've gone into this before, he is the most useless person ever on this show. Like I said, he is a real doctor, but he will never tell us anything we are not already seeing right in front of us. There are other shows on Spike TV that utilize a doctor as well, where it actually makes sense. Like Mansers, for example. Maybe I do need a doctor to explain to me the logistics of farting so hard your balls explode. I don't know how that works. I need a medical explanation. But on Deadliest Warrior, all he does is walk up to a gel dummy that just had its head blown off and tell us that he would be dead. Now, alongside the hosts, every episode has two warriors on each side of the aisle to defend their respected warrior, and those are always the best parts of the show. It's a total cringe fest. Whether or not the producers make them hype it up for entertainment is besides the point. I love seeing grown men argue like middle schoolers playing war. Now, like I promised before, the episode we're gonna be watching today is the one where that guy just goes ham on the gel dummy. That is the Navy SEALs versus the Israeli Commandos. Now, the thing that's different about this episode is that the warrior experts are actually experts. They they were the actual warriors. So within the experts, we're going to see actual Navy SEALs and Israeli commandos, which means there is going to be so much more passion behind the bickering, and I can't wait. Here in our high-tech fight club, we've gathered a team of scientists, doctors, and military operatives. Now, right off the bat, the thing that I notice is that this episode being so much further down the line than the last one we watched, the narrator has so much more pep in his step. He's pumped. I also want us all to appreciate this shot of Max. I've been watching it nonstop for the past week. Israeli commandos, they got a lot of things to worry about. Hamas, Hezbollah, guerrilla fighters, and they also have to be prepared at any time throughout the day or night. I want to talk about Jeff's glow up. We watched an episode on stream from early in season one, and Jeff legitimately looked like he modeled for Skechers. But now look at him, he's a fucking unit. I think he also just wears better shirts now. In other wardrobe changes, we also see the doctor ditched his whole cliche Spike TV white doctor coat trope. And I think the showrunners even realized that they can only stretch so much out of the doctor just saying that someone would be dead when they're obviously dead. So now they just give him random tasks and have him weigh in on shit that he would normally not be qualified to. This is a very interesting matchup. We have the Navy SEAL, perhaps the best trained military men of the United States of America versus the Israeli commandos who are fierce fighters. Both teams will use a ferocious array of firepower to carry out their special ops scenarios. Oh boy, another matchup between gun and another gun. Smaller gun and other smaller gun. Sharp knife versus Sharp knife, but different. And explosives. And there's usually always something silly that they bring to the table. I don't remember what it is in this episode. It might just be the knife. But like in the last video, it was the fucking slingshot. In the one we watch on stream, it was the ninja's black eggs. Hey, Chris from the future here. You know what would protect you from those black eggs? A sleep mask from the sponsor of today's video, Manta Sleep. Manta Sleep creates high quality and affordable sleep masks for all types of sleepers. They believe it's essential to have good sleep and to take regular naps so you can stay energized for a better quality of life. Now, I've always been a huge proponent of naps. My friends will even tell you. They often hold it against me. But when I say that my power nap game has changed completely after using Manta Sleep Masks, I mean it. I was honestly surprised when I received it at how good quality and comfortable it actually was after trying other not so good sleep masks before. I personally use the Manta Slim Mask being a side sleeper and a light sleeper overall. Like look at me here, sun shining right in my face. Do I look like I care? This is all I see. Okay, that's only because whenever I fall asleep I have nightmares of paying my overdue license sticker. But folks, what I'm trying to say here is the masks do their job. I'm talking complete blackout. Now, aside from the standard and slim mask that I've used before, Manta offers plenty of different mask options for all types of sleepers. Masks ranging from cooling to warming relief, aromatherapy, weighted masks, silk masks, or even the Manta Sleep Mask Pro with all the benefits of the standard sleep mask with added comfort and breathability. So guys, head on over to mantasleep.com, use code CHRISJAMES to get 10% off your own sleep mask and up your sleeping game like me. Thank you to Manta Sleep for sponsoring, and now back to the video. Now, as usual, the bulk of the show is the weapons testing. It is the show. That's the show. And they start things off with a bang. 
explosion, not the abomination of an energy drink, with the silliest demonstration we've seen yet. To test the C4, the SEAL team must take out two targets on a boat 200 yards offshore. They've got two JCPenney mannequins propped up in this shitty little boat that they're gonna blow the fuck up. To reach the boat, Colin will use a rebreather, allowing him to breathe underwater without producing air bubbles. He generally only get detected by, you know, sending bubbles up to the surface, so it's recycled oxygen that you're using for a number of hours. You can see that Colin is currently winning the contest that none of them know they're a part of, that is, standing the widest. You will not tip over a Navy SEAL. You cannot tip over a Navy SEAL. Colin carries the C4 in a canvas satchel with a magnetic plate that will attach to the boat's hull. You want to go blow something up? Yes, yes. do it. All right. I just imagine they forgot to rent out the entire lake, so there's just some kid and his grandpa fishing over on the side. <laughs> Avoid the effects of the underwater shockwave. Colin returns to shore to remotely detonate the C4. And this is what happens when Jeff has a monster before shooting. On three, two, one, yeah! yeah! Hell yeah, that's what I'm talking about! Hey guys, uh, the test boat with the mannequins, it's over there. Oh, fuck. Mission complete! That's what I'm talking about. Good to go. <laughs> just blew it straight up the middle and kind of vaporized their seats, if you will. <laughs> okay, so yeah, that was a pretty impressive explosion, but there's no way that that's killing anybody. Even if you've only lost a limb, but now you're in the ocean, you're gonna end up dying. Oh, okay. <laughs> Thanks, Doc. The U.S. Navy SEALs have already demonstrated the lethal power of C4, but the Israeli commandos place their confidence in a plastic explosive that can take out terrorists with deadly precision. Now the Israeli commandos are going to counter the Navy SEAL's plastic explosive with their own plastic explosive, but it's different. Israeli commandos, you ready? We're ready. Three, two, one, call it in! First and foremost, the hand that was holding the cell phone, gone. Completely gone. Yep. Both of these guys, totally fine. Totally fine. Targets down, all four collaterals, walking away from it. That's why is these already so good. It's good damage to this individual, but we're trying to kill people. We're trying to kill a lot of people, him and all of his friends. Okay, yeah, that, that wouldn't work because we're trying to kill multiple people. All right, well, well, well okay, well, what we do is we would give the Navy SEALs five phones, and then we would we would make them all answer those phones, and then they would all die, right, Doc? What we're gonna do is take a pound of C4 head-to-head -head against a pound of Semtex. So, Colin, you'll be setting up your C4 in the outhouse on the left. Moti, you'll be setting up your Semtex, the outhouse on the right detonating the two explosives in identical enclosed spaces. I like how they're at least matching them up with equal tests for the explosives, unlike last episode, where they just placed a moped full of gasoline next to one of them, and that one got the edge. Okay, boys, we're looking at the outhouse on the left. One pound of C4. Colin, are you ready? Ready. Three, two, one, let it rip! Holy yeah, baby, yeah! Yeah, it's basically amputating your most important limb, your head. So obviously the head is completely thrown away from the body. The spine is almost completely pulled out from the body. I mean, you've got the liver hanging out. The entire insides are basically obliterated. This has to take the cake for like biggest waste of time explanations he's given yet. So now it's time for the next test. Who's small gun better? What we need you to do is take out these lamps to neutralize the ambient light, take both terrorists out, and avoid any collateral damage. They're once again putting them through the exact same test as before, where who comes out is just, who's better with the gun? Surprise! Nice. But Modi, I gotta ask you, man, you took more than five rounds to take these lights out, but as soon as that guy came through the door, it was bam, 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 three right in the chest, like nothing. We don't think about lights. Okay, buddy, well, that's part of the test. Take out these lamps. Okay, looks like you got everything right on your math test, except for the division problems. Oh, I don't believe in division. Okay, um, it's on the test though. <laughs> okay. Each Special Force soldier had two confirmed kills and no collateral damage. Nice! It's now up to our team to decide which warrior has the edge. I saw a little bit better shooting from Colin with the six hour, so I'm giving it my edge. For mid-range weapons, the edge goes to the Navy SEALs. So the Navy SEALs get the edge because their guy's better. 
that's it. So now on to the special weapons, which I was right, it is just knives. Normally this would be a bummer, because I like to see what silly shit they pull out, but this means we get to see that guy go ham on the gel dummy, and I can't wait. How do these blades perform in battle? To find out, Jeff attaches high-tech sensors to each warrior's wrist to measure the speed of the strikes against a ballistics gel torso. High-tech, guys, all right? What does that mean? Beats me. I mean, what is luxury? All just words to excite us plebs. Heads up, if you don't want to see a human look-alike gel dummy get completely eviscerated, just go to this time. Two, one, come up! I can already tell just by his expression, this is not the first time he's had that much blood on his face. The accelerometer clocked Mike's stabbing speed at 19 miles per hour. Now I know that this guy hacks and slashes at the same speed that I throw a bowling ball. How do I know this? Because of the high speed sensor technology that my local bowling alley has in place. Notice how cool that sounded because I said high tech. This guy's done. You've got the airway, you've got the major blood vessels in the neck, you've hit the spinal cord. Someone get this guy a towel. <laughs> It's now the SEAL's turn to unleash their Recon 1 knife. Here we go. Three, two, one, cut him off! Oh. You've decapitated him, you've amputated him, you've disemboweled him, and you have a knife. Okay, Max looks like he needs a bucket. I'm gonna need the edge to go to the Navy SEALs just on theatrics alone. <sighs> okay, Rob, you're all good, we got the shot. I don't know. If I have to use a knife, it's gonna be a really, really close set if I have to do that. The problem with the three inch blade is you'll get their second versus if you have a longer blade, you'll have the reach advantage. The K bar has the advantage because of his length because I got to the target first. Why don't instead of you guys just arguing semantics, you duke it out right now and have at it? Unless, of course, you don't have confidence in your warrior and said warrior's weapons, which in that case, it would be a breach of your contracts. <laughs> So just have at it. I really don't know how to call this one. Mm -hmm. We had hand speeds off both of these men. Yeah, really the only difference between these two tests is that we should probably keep a close eye on the Navy SEAL guy. Unfortunately, the Navy SEAL guy got his shirt ruined for nothing because it was a draw. To gauge the accuracy of the assault rifles, Jeff devises a test that will assess the shooting skills of each operative. Gentlemen, these targets here, innocent bystanders do not hit these targets. If they're innocent bystanders and not targets, then why are they wearing targets, Jeff? It'd be like me wearing a shirt that says, my sister ate my homework. If my sister didn't actually eat my homework, it would be lying, Jeff. 34 seconds, sweet. And now the doctor's on timer duty. 48 seconds, sweet. Nice work, Michael. Thank you, sir. Yeah, okay, teacher's pet, Jesus Christ. Once again, the Navy SEALs win because their guy is better. That's it. So now that they've compiled all the raw data, it's time to find out who is the deadliest warrior, but not yet because they want to show us how good they are at fighting. Even though it has nothing to do with the test and it will not be factored in at all. Krav Maga is designed to survive an all-out attack against an enemy that's willing to die. Nice. Whoa, cool. All right. If it's a live or die situation, I'll be ripping the flesh off somebody's body with my teeth if I have to. I'd rip their flesh off with my teeth if I had to. Oh, okay. Did did you get did you get that? Are you are you gonna put that in the computer? All right, guys. Now it's finally time for them to hit one button on their computer and simulate an entire quarter digital fight sequence. We can finally see who is the deadliest warrior. And just like before, they shoot some, some people get shot, some people get stabbed, some people get blown up. Yada yada. It ends with the Navy SEAL blowing up the last two Israeli commandos and then doing what I can only assume is official Navy SEAL protocol when besting an opponent. And then at the end, everyone smiles, they're all friends, they shake hands, they're allies, it's, it's sweet. Not as entertaining as it would have been if they had just left heated because that is where it's at. But yeah guys, Deadliest Warrior once again 
Like I said before, if you do want to catch my streams, I've been watching this more. I bought the fucking series, so we can watch as much as we want on twitch.tv slash christhejames. But anyways, guys, if you did enjoy the video, give it a like rating down below, comment, subscribe if you haven't. With that being said, thank you again for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye. Mm -hmm.